Hi everybody, my name is Christopher James Lees. I'm the assistant conductor for your Charlotte Symphony Orchestra, and it is an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to be speaking with you today about Mahler's incredible second symphony, his Resurrection Symphony. Now, the city of Charlotte has only ever heard this piece live twice in the last 50 years. The first was in 1986, the last time was almost 20 years ago in 1999, which is why you're not going to want to miss our two performances on May 12th and 13th. Now, if you have heard a Mahler symphony before, or you've never heard a Mahler symphony before, you certainly have never heard it performed with this much power, energy, vitality, and urgency as the Charlotte Symphony and Charlotte Symphony Chorus will play in May. This is a piece that every time it comes to the stage has a palpable impact on the audiences that have the luxury and the privilege of hearing it. This piece was written over the span of about six years in which Mahler himself had uh, a number of personal tragedies. His father passed away, his mother passed away, and his sister passed away, all within the span of a single year. And so this composer of these grand works that we know channels it into an incredible experience that affirms the meaning and the purpose, purpose of life. And that kind of um, statement does not come around that often. It's broken into five movements, and the gloriousness of the concluding movement makes every step along the journey make absolute sense. We begin with the funeral march, lamenting on the things, the joys, the sorrows, the highs, the lows, the peaks and the valleys of life. The second movement takes us through some of the happier memories, and the third evokes a kind of rushing in hopes of finding an, an answer to the big questions beyond the everyday experience of living, but why are we here? What happens after we die? What brought us here in the first place? The fourth movement introduces the human voice and the text that refers to the first light that God shines upon us. And the last movement with chorus, offstage brass, and fiery judgment starts with a vision of the apocalypse, which ultimately leads to transformative, um, iridescent redemption. There isn't a moment in this piece where if you're in the hall hearing it, you won't feel goosebumps or are in the presence of a most divine and incredibly transformative gift. So the experience of hearing Mahler live is one you're not going to want to miss. And everywhere that you go throughout the piece, you'll have an incredible vision of what might be possible beyond today's understanding of life. We hope you'll join us on May 12th and 13th for this, as I said, life-affirming and um, transcendent experience.